Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and welcome to episode 209 of Ask Boss Bounty. You know the drill by now. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday where I answer your questions. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, please leave your questions in the comments section of this video. And as I say, hopefully you'll be featured. If you do happen to enjoy the video, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you are new. And with all that being said, Let's get straight onto it. Rhett Roberts says, thank you, Tim, for more great work. Question for next week. Which clone commander or captain would you like to see done in TVC? I would like to see Fox, even though he's probably the worst commander and least liked clone. Then they could do a four pack of shock troopers and one could have a removable pauldron. I'd like to know your thoughts. I mean, the shock troopers are very high up on my list that I would like to see um, done in TVC. We've only got that sort of skinny version at the moment. However, you can probably tell by who I have on the table here. For me, it's definitely Commander Bly. I think after the 501st and the 212th, my next favorite or most wanted is definitely the 327th and Commander Bly, basically. They've got him in the Black Series. He looks fantastic, I've got to say. And now we have that new clone body. That's who I'd like them to tackle next. Rishi Outfield says, Howdy BB, it has come to my attention that there are annual excellent Star Wars related conventions in the UK where you can meet the various background actors from the trilogy. Have you gone to these and who have you encountered that had the best experience meeting? So yes, there are various things that happen throughout the year. I'm sure in other countries as well. Uh, the biggest one that I go to is Echo Base Live in Redditch, which happens twice a year. I do try and go every single time. I didn't go to the last one, mind, but... In terms of meeting the characters, yes, they always have people there, signings. And yeah, I'm probably not the best person to ask about this because I'm one of these people that go up, pay the money, get the signature and then go. I don't know, I struggle with the small talk. I sort of get worried about sort of asking them something that maybe, you know, they've probably heard a thousand times before. I don't know. I just feel a bit awkward in those situations. So yeah, I'm probably not the best person to ask really. But, you know, they're always very pleasant. Uh, the guy that signed my Bespin security guard, uh, Quinton Pierre, <laughs> you could tell he didn't really want to be there, uh, if I'm honest, but, um, you know, he was pleasant enough. Pesto Pizza 2001 says, Hi BB, do you think the TVC Stormtrooper that will be released this year will be the same mould as the VC-231, but with a holster? So this is VC-231, and in case you haven't opened this figure already, it does have a holster, because it is based on the Stormtrooper from A New Hope. And to answer your question, yes... I'm 99.9% .9 sure that the one that's going to be coming out that they pipelined is going to be a straight repack of this one. This one was either a Walmart or Target exclusive, I think Walmart. So it's pretty hard to get hold of at the time in decent condition anyway. And then I think Entertainment Earth in the US got a bunch of them. But yeah, it's always good to have Stormtroopers out there and I'm sure it'll sell plenty. Brad Ancliffe 740 says, Hi BB, question for next week. More of a discussion point. What are your thoughts on a troop builder pack? with the figures loose and with less articulation, but in pre-molded stances, elbow bent to hold the blasters, etc., as an alternative to buying on-card troopers at a lower cost. P.S. My son gets a kick out of you reading these. Can you give him a shout out, Thomas, by asking him to stop losing hands, helmets, and weapons of our loose figures? <laughs> Thomas, if you're there, buddy, big shout out to you, my friend. Hope you're having a great day. Um, and yes, as your dad says, please stop losing the hands and the helmets and the weapons of your figures, but don't worry. My son is exactly the same. He he does that all the time. The amount of times I find a figure that hasn't got a hand or something like that. So it's a quite a common thing. So don't worry too much. In answer to your question, Brad, um, <laughs> it's a simple answer, buddy. It's a big no from me. I, yeah, I really do not want figures in pre-post stances. For me, they they might as well be statues and, you know, in another line or another company that does those basically. Um, yeah, we don't really want to go back to those times. I much prefer it where I can actually pose my stormtroopers and troopers and whatever else into the poses that I want them to be in. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't really ever ask for, you know, to go backwards in terms of articulation. D Chimpy says, Hey BB, thanks for being such an advocate for us TVC fans. I look forward to listening to your show every Sunday night. Cheers, buddy. I really do appreciate that. He says, why do you think Hasbro decided to announce that they're celebrating all of the prequels this year versus focusing solely on the anniversary of the Phantom Menace like they did with the Return of the Jedi in 2023? Do you think there's still some reluctance based on the Phantom Menace 3D rollout? I'm really hoping we get newly sculpted figures of Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon from the Phantom Menace since I'm really not a fan of their current TVC iterations. Are there any Phantom Menace updates or new sculpts you'd like to see? So yeah, it is an interesting one, isn't it, why they've gone down this route. And I think, you know, with the Return of the Jedi, it's a, 
a universally accepted and enjoyed part of the Star Wars franchise, in my opinion. It's part of the OT. Everyone seems to like it. With the with the prequels, there is still an element of people out there. I think it has improved since the sequel trilogy came out, but there is still an element of people out there that don't rate those movies and don't like anything that's to do with them, you know, regarding toys and things like that. So grouping them all into one, that it enables them to sort of get more out of it, basically. You know, everybody knows that we wanted Dooku and they're, and they're doing Dooku. So I don't know, man. I think maybe you're right with the Phantom Menace 3D rollout. Perhaps there isn't enough stuff that they haven't already done from the Phantom Menace that they really trust will sell really well. But in terms of what I would like, you know, I've said it before, Watto is definitely one for me that's missing from the Phantom Menace as well, in terms of a new sculpt. In terms of an update, I think Darth Maul needs an update. The one that we have uh, really isn't good enough. Same can be said for Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan for that matter. You know, the two you've listed there, you're absolutely right. They are well below the standard that we're getting these days. But that's the thing, I think maybe in this year they've got plenty of other stuff to do and, you know, fitting just the Phantom Menace or picking a few characters out. I think they want, you know, sure fire wins and Dooku is going to be one of those basically. So whether that's going to be the same in the Black Series because they seem to be getting more Phantom Menace stuff, uh, I don't know. But in terms of the vintage collection, it looks like they're grouping all in one. Kurt K says, hey Tim, congrats on four years and thanks for your commitment to TVC. With the rumoured blurg ahead of us, do you think Hasbro is making a commitment to Beasts? And which one would you like to see next? So yes, I do believe it is four years. Last week, four years of Ask Boss Bounty. That was episode 208. So time flies, my friend. But thanks for reminding me of that. Um, the blurg does seem to be rumoured. I think Yakface has rumoured it. I've seen one or two other places that have rumoured it now as well. So maybe the cat is firmly out of the bag on the blurg, which will be great for everybody because I'm sure that was a, you know, a much requested beast and that does kind of show that Hasbro committed now to world building and beasts we had the massive last year admittedly it's a small creature but it was a start and now hopefully we're going to be getting the blurg in terms of ones that I would like them to do I mean there's plenty but just to name a few I think we need a new do back I don't think any of the ones that we've got in 3.75 inch scale are good enough the closest one for me is still the power of the force 2 one uh, but if they could do something like they did for the Black Series, that would be awesome. Also, the Banther as well. I don't think any of the Banthers that we've got are good enough. Uh, the Power of the Force one looks like a furball to me. And the uh, one from the 30th anniversary, I think it is, just looks like an absolute mess. It's, you know, the hair looks all knotted. It just doesn't look correct, in, in my opinion. And then, of course, we've got the Eopi. I think that's how you say it. They should have released this when they released the Obi-Wan series. You know, as in multiple scenes, he was constantly on that thing and pretty much every outfit that he wore in the show, he was riding it as well, including the Nomad uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi that we saw at the end of the show. And that figure's being released in the Black Series. If they ever do that in the Vintage Collection, then, you know, you're going to want the Eopi. So um, this one is a pretty old one. It's, you know, it's got limited articulation. It's not too bad, but it could be so much better. Trevor Marie says, hi BB, question for next week. If you were given the chance to complete a Rebels pilot X-Wing 4-pack, which pilots would you choose? Thanks for keeping this hobby engaging and fun. So yeah, actually I forgot to put the Rebel pilots that I do have in my little display here. But I'll just tell you the four that I would like in a 4-pack. And it would be a 4-pack of carded figures because I would want these on card at the end of the day. Um, you know, a 4-pack of pilots, generic pilots or whatever in in a sort of loose set would be great, but these ones I'd want carded. And first of all, I'd like the Red Leader, Garvin Dreyas, I think his name is. That one's a, a must for me for the Battle of Yavin. Uh, Big Stark Lighter, Luke Skywalker's buddy. We definitely need him. He was released in the 3.75 inch Black Series and I believe the 30th anniversary, but neither of those are really good enough anymore, you know, and also we need that cool car back with that checkered, uh, display on his helmet then of course I'd love to see uh, Mr. Jack Porkins you cannot have a Rebels pilot Yavin set without Mr. Porkins so he would be my third and then the final one I'd probably pick Theron Net um, I believe he was red 10 I think but failing that you could probably go for Dutch Vander who is the gold leader uh, for the Y-Wings. Again, another 3.75 inch black series figure that's on the, you know, the old 
body, basically. He'd be a pretty cool one on a card back as well. Chesby Music says, question for next week. Do you believe that the reason the first 96 not being released yet is because Hasbro is afraid that some collectors will walk away from collecting TVC due to finally having what they wanted from this line? I definitely think there's an element of that. I don't think it's the only reason. I think there's lots of figures in the original 96, which are going to be tough ones for them to do basically in terms of you know all new sculpts and when they release those and what have you but now we're in like up to 330 odd figures in the vintage collection you would think that they would have done slightly more than they already have uh, but yeah there is definitely an element of that at the end of the day if you give the fans everything they want and there's nothing more for them to collect then you no longer have a line so there's definitely an element of that, I think. David Sendejas says, I always look forward to your vid uploads on Sunday's BB question next week. Do you think it's possible that Hasbro to make an ATTE? I would personally think it would be new tooling. Uh, I've got an idea for the next Hasbro project. Hear me out. The ATTE from the Clone Wars show, season one, episode 21, Liberty on Ryloth with ATRT deployment like the show. Figure could include Commander Ponds and a new tooled clones. Just a thought. I'm almost done with my vehicle collection. Yeah, so for me, the ATTE and the turbo tank, I actually reviewed the turbo tank this week on one of my videos, as well as this guy here. I've made quite a few videos this week, actually. Uh, but yeah, the ATTE and the clone turbo tank are two of my favorite vehicles from the Clone Wars era, if you like, and also from the, the legacy collection, basically. And, and I think I said in my clone turbo tank video that they just don't make vehicles like this anymore. And I think that's true. And absolutely, you know, unless they just straight repack the ATTE, you're not going to be getting it anytime soon. I very much doubt, and I don't think we'd ever get that as a Hasla personally. But I, I like the idea, buddy. Maximus Mertel says, question for next week: Could you see Hasbro doing the Naboo Royal Starfighter as a Hasla vehicle? I always wanted an updated one, as the original doesn't hold up the best and is quite underscaled. I feel like it'd work well, as there are so many characters that co could go with it, and so much playability. Yeah, it's one of those ones that is a is a pretty good idea. But I, I, you know, with these HasLab projects, they only come round once a year if we're lucky. Um, hopefully, they're going to be once a year from now on. But you know, there's so many other vehicles out there that I think the community wants. That I think the Royal Starfighter would be quite far down that list. But it's a pretty good idea. But it's interesting what you said about it not holding up. And I think a lot of that is to do with that it's not shiny enough. And if you can imagine, you know people sort of wanting C-3PO vac metalized and then not being able to do that. Um, I don't think they're ever going to be doing a vac metalized Naboo Royal Starfighter anytime soon, but you know, we can only dream. Brian Buck says, hey BB, would you be interested in a new Emperor's Wrath Vader using the Dark Times mold? I know we have a TVC one already, but I'd love that new Vader mold. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I do love this card back. One of my favorite card backs, that one actually. And the figure there looks pretty awesome in the bubble. But if I wanted that figure loose now, I would definitely want it to be on that Dark Times Vader. You know, any any Vader that gets made now in the future has to be based on that new sculpt. One of the best figures we've ever had. Um, so it's something that I would like. I, you know, it's again, it's one of those things, isn't it? We've already kind of got it already, so it isn't like really high up on my list of the things that I want. But if they announced it, I would not be complaining at all. John Dunlap says, Tim, good tidings. Since I've only heard of you for the last year and a half and I've enjoyed streaming past episodes. So I came across an episode that you were enjoying the first two episodes of Obi-Wan and you seemed hopeful for the series. So my question is, what episode or what happened that made you not enjoy the series overall? Myself, I wish the last fight was a tie. Thank you for all the great content. I was eight when Star Wars came out and loved the series. So like I said last week, I don't really hate, you know, the Obi-Wan series. It was enjoyable enough for me. But I think where it started to lose me a little bit was where the first encounter between Obi-Wan and Vader, I, first of all, I thought that looked like it was in a studio. That's the first time that I thought that this whole volume thing that they used didn't work that well it didn't look real enough for me you know just in terms of like the sort of the background and it kind of sort of retcons things for me a little bit like when I think about Star Wars and you hope and I think about some of the lines that Vader says and Obi-Wan says and that whole thing about you know he senses something that he's not sensed since blah 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 I always thought that that was like a long time ago you know ages ago and then when we see uh, the prequels and they have that fight then you start thinking, okay, maybe he's talking about that. I didn't really expect them to sort of bump into each other 
after that. From my point of view, Obi-Wan was exiled. <laughs> I mean, they weren't going to turn up and see each other again, basically. So it kind of started losing me a little bit at that point. Also, I felt that it wasn't really the Obi-Wan show. There was a lot more else going on that wasn't really centered on Obi-Wan so much. And yeah, I think that's just where it started to get a bit silly for me. But as I say, it was it was okay. It was enjoyable. I'm not going to hate on it. I didn't absolutely hate it. It's not the worst thing in the world. I just think there's better things out there, you know. Beast of Viper Squad says, Hey boss, big fan of the channel. Keep it up. Question for next week. How do you feel about Haslab doing the Outrider? That's a vehicle that could really do with an update. Considering the great job they did with updating the Falcon, I think they could do the same with the Outrider. Maybe have some characters from Shadows of the Empire as tier unlocks. Any thoughts? I definitely think there's an audience for it, 100%. Not totally sure how big that audience is and how many people actually know about the Outrider. I mean, obviously, hardcore Star Wars fans most certainly will. And that's maybe my sort of issue with it. Also, as I mentioned in another question as well regarding Haslabs, I just feel that there's certain things that are constantly on people's want lists that would maybe be above that. So you think like Death Star playset, Sandcrawler, Cantina playset, um, the Imperial Shuttle, things like that, the Ghost until they announced it. Those sort of things are constantly on people's want lists and maybe the Outrider is as well, I don't know. But as I say, I believe there is a certain amount of audience for it. It's just whether that's a big enough audience for it to to fund, basically, you know. But it'd be, it'd be an interesting one for sure. Donovan Weaver is asking whether I think that E-Wing was released because um, it was requested via Facebook groups and polls and things like that. And he also says, I know there's a lot of questions coming to you, so I'm going to add another in case this one gets through. Do you think that the ghost ship and the sail barge are good examples of the maximum size a Haslab could be, or is there a possibility that a release could get larger? So first of all, I think uh, the E-Wing, for me, it was a little bit of a, a, a weird choice, I've got to say. Uh, I think I mentioned that on last week's video as well. You know, there's loads of other vehicles that I think that they could have done before that, but, you know, it, it is a cool ship, and I think it's been... You know quite well received especially as a new sculpt it's something we haven't had before which is a lot of the time what people are asking for right uh, in terms of the sail barge and the ghost ship uh being sort of the maximum size i i, I would worry if things started to get any bigger than that purely from like a space issue and where people actually put these things the barge is absolutely huge the ghost is going to be massive and you know the average person has only got like a a small space to display these things i mean if you're lucky enough to have your own star wars collecting room it's still going to be of a certain size right you know and most people have got pretty large collections as well so i don't know it depends doesn't it i mean if they were to do like a haslab atat for example which is bigger than the legacy collection one then you'd imagine that would be pretty damn big right um if they were to do a death star playset with all the different areas of it and what have you you could imagine that being quite big so I don't know, but I think in terms of ship size, I think, yeah, I think the barge and the ghost is probably as big as they're going to get. And in my opinion, that's a right, the right thing to do as well. Shakes the clone says question for next week. How did you crack the case of the new filming setup camera focus issues? Everything is looking great lately. If you have told us before, I either forgot or didn't see it. Uh, no, I don't think I've mentioned it before. Yeah, I mean, since I've had my new collection room and I've started to film my videos like this, I have had the odd sort of focus issue, especially with like reviews and stuff like that. But I think that coincided with me getting a new phone as well and the focus being a little bit different on that. Essentially, what it is is that the phone tries to pick up things in the background and not the foreground sometimes. So if I was to bring this figure sort of here, you can see that it goes a little bit blurry and it's just kind of learning where the sweet spot is like that i think if i can see correctly that would be the sweet spot so it is a bit difficult it's challenging to get it right and it's something that obviously you try and practice and get right but you know thanks for bearing with me star killer says question for next week bb with the recent darth revan and jedi revan hk 47 and also the reissue of star killer which all were top of the list for most collectors and did extremely well in sales which is always great for the tvc line I think this is an indication that Hasbro should give us more expanded universe characters from the comics like Exar Kun and Darth Bane that I want to see in TVC as do many collectors. Any chance we can see more figures like this in the line this year and what, if any, do you want from the EU? So the first point of your question there is that you said that they've sold well. I'm not too sure if you've got inside information on, 
on how well they sold or whatever, but you know, it's not something I know about. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you if they have sold well or not. I think Darth Revan most certainly was a very popular one. Um, the reissue of Starkiller, I'm not too sure about that, but who knows, man. But yeah, you're right. I think there is an audience out there for Expanded Universe, just like I mentioned about the Outrider. So I'm sure that Hasbro know this and Hasbro will be you know, producing more figures from the Expanded Universe. However, I do feel that there'll be few and far between. You won't get loads of them, basically. So, you know, don't expect anything like comic packs with loads of different figures from the EU or things like that. I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, they might sort of drop the odd one in here or there. Des T says, another great episode. Boss question for next week. With your new room pretty much laid out with all your great items, do you have it insured? And if you do, is it a whole collection or an individual pieces? A boring question, I know, but a valid one. It is a valid one because everyone has collections. Um, yes, I do have my collection insured. Um, I haven't sort of named individual pieces on the policy, but what I did do is suggest a maximum value for one item that I can claim on. So if anything happened to one particular item, as long as I could prove, you know, how much it's costs or worth or whatever, then I can claim for that amount. But yeah, the rest of it is insured as, as one big thing. I don't sort of split it all out into individual things. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what I do. I know there are sort of specialist collectibles insurance, which I might look at in the future. But what I did was is I just amended my current home insurance to include uh, my collection. All right, then, folks, that's it for this week's episode. I want to thank everybody for watching and also thank you for submitting your questions. If you do have a question for next week's episode, which will be episode 210, let me know those questions in the comments section of this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. As always, your support means a great deal to me. So thank you so much and we shall see you on the next one.